you ever have something start out incredibly good and then it turns into an enormous disappointment? Well, if so, I have the episode just for you because uh, Bill and I got together, uh, dealt through some internet issues, but ended up recording, I think, a fun episode around a water park in Georgia. And you'll see why we liked it. And then also, well, why we think it was really confusing. So here's the episode. I hope you enjoy it. Are you looking for a small business to acquire? Well, this book right here is the Bible for people in your shoes. It's the Harvard Business Review Guide to Buying a Small Business. It's the go-to book. But here's the problem. You see this whole book and this little bit? This is the only part that talks about the hardest part of buying a business, finding the right one to buy. And the bad news is it's full of outdated advice and stuff that doesn't work anymore. I'm Michael Gridley. I own 12 companies, including a couple that go out and buy more companies themselves. And I have a podcast where we look at new businesses to buy each and every week. I've looked at thousands of businesses for sale and I've bought and sold nearly 20 of them. And I'm telling you the old ways, they don't work anymore. So I made a course with the latest and the greatest, and it's called How to Find a Great Business to Buy. It's laser focused on the new way to run a business search with what works today. So you can play smarter than the sea of buyers who are out there competing against you to try to buy these businesses. And you can get the deal that was meant for you. In the course, you'll learn three things. One, how to narrow your search with a tight thesis. We're hunting with a rifle here, not shotguns. Two, how to scale your outreach to get the most possible leads. This is a numbers game after all. And three, how to run your funnel like a pro so you can boil down thousands of leads to find your one great deal. Plus, you'll get a couple of exclusive Chili's jokes that I've never published before. So what's not to love? Go to girdly.com slash great business to take the course today. You got to send me the deal, Michael. <laughs> you don't get the deal? <laughs> well, I'll put it in the chat. This, <laughs> if, this, <laughs> if this ends up in the live recording, this is proof <laughs> that this is not a scripted show. <laughs> Here's here's the here's the deal and you'll like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know that's not guaranteed if you've been listening to the show for any amount of time. <laughs> I don't know, man. This one's pretty fun. Uh so uh anyway, how are you doing? I am very good. Um excited to be doing this. I I have had uh if you've been a listener, you've seen I've had some spotty availability for the last month. I was gone 3 out of the 4 weeks of kind of back half of late October, early November. And I'm back in the Acquisition Anonymous rhythm and I'm enjoying it. Well, I'm glad to have you. How's your course going? Are you going to launch it soon? <laughs> I will need to make significant more progress if I'm going to launch it soon. Um, so ho hopefully uh, something to launch in Q1. Um, but you are much more motivated than me and are launching something next week, right? Yes, I'm launching my How to Find a Business to Buy course because uh, my observations were two parts. One is... If you go look at the HBR book or like the, a lot of the books about like how to buy a business, they have like eight pages on how to find a business. And they're like, go peruse listings and like <laughs> call brokers. I was like, brokers don't return phone calls. This is a crazy talk. <laughs> anyway, so I took everything I've learned about how modern, like hunting for a business to buy and acquiring one. And I put it in like a two and a half hour course. And what I like about what we've done is like, we spent a lot of time making it very concise and deep, right? So there's not a lot of fluff to it. Like you can get it done in the morning. So yeah, so we're launching it on um, next Wednesday. Sweet. So table of contents is spend 20 years searching for deals, start podcast, review 250 <laughs> deals, <laughs> and then people send you deals. Is that how it works? Uh, so yeah, you could do that. So, well, there's, I do talk a bit about how you can get very creative. Like there's all these hacks that people do. Like you can run a podcast that talk specifically to the type of seller you want to talk to, right? And they'll they'll be on a podcast where they will ignore you if you send them a cold email and ask for stuff. Um, other stuff that people just don't even really think about, like one of my favorite hacks we put in there is like you start networking with like what I call like old retired guys who like just got out of an industry and they have nothing but time and they're super happy to educate you and they know everyone. And like you should talk to those people because they're like a great door to talk to sellers as well. So there's like all those stuff that we've put in there, or you could start your own podcast. <laughs> so, so, to do. so we'll see. Um, we're, we're launching it on next Wednesday, but it turns out my team is highly motivated to launch it there. Like every day they're like, girdly get in there and like get to work. <laughs> so that's why it's moving so fast. Anyway. So yeah. So look at us. <laughs> of course we're guru. We've turned, we've gone from uh, regular business dudes to podcasters to gurus. <laughs> so here the we go. The inevitable evolution of all internet people. <laughs> uh, well, 
in the announcement, I'm going to write up what I think like courses have unfortunately been really spoiled, but like, I think courses are like a beautiful thing because there are these aspects of like really important, but valuable knowledge that are just good for like a very niche audience. And like, if you can't write a book on that stuff, cause like, there's just no way you can sell enough of them together. So like my hold Coke thing was like that. Like the TAM is like a couple thousand people in the world, but it's hugely valuable to them. And I think this like business searching course is like really valuable to, you know, hundreds or thousands of people in the world, but not, a, not enough to make its own book. So I think courses are actually really good to fill that gap of that kind of knowledge. So at least that's what I'm telling myself. Yeah. Well, so I can't remember if it was you or someone else who told me this, probably you, uh, cause we spent so much time together, but, uh, when anybody is trying to share online, I think a lot of very smart people have this aversion to sharing online because they feel like it's guru-y and it's like weird and like, no, like they don't want to be a guru. They just want to be a person. Uh, I think you helped me reframe it once as it's more being a teacher, you know, it's sharing the things that you know to help other people on their journeys. It's, it's selfless. It's not selfish. Uh, and so I think if you approach it, if you approach sharing on the internet that way, and this goes out to anybody who knows anything that might be listening, you know, if you've got cool knowledge in your head that you've hard won through years of experience, um, I would encourage you to share it with people in a teaching way, not a guru way. And I think Michael, you've always done a great job at that. You know, you're just trying to help people. And that makes it not weird. That makes it nice. Yeah. But I mean, I think everybody makes the mistake when they first start doing it. If you look at my old tweets, I made this mistake too, where it's like, you have to, you have like come at it with like this level of insecurity. So people start doing these like guru type, like fortune cookie tweets and they just suck. <laughs> like just go be a real person. That's what I tell everybody. Like just be a real person and people will, will, they'll cheer for you and they'll believe in you and they'll, they'll have discussions with you. And if you just show up and start, you know, be nice at work and start tweeting shit like that. Like, don't. <laughs> like, it's, it's nobody wants that. Nobody wants it. But anyway, speaking of things that I want, can I pitch you on this water park, Bill? I do not think this will be very hard, but you are welcome to try. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So this is uh, this is from Biz by Cell. And look, I'm on a crusade. I've decided I'm bringing only cool deals to the stuff, and it's stuff that I get excited to talk about. And so this is a water park in Helen, Georgia. Which is called, which is in White County. And they have a picture of it. It looks like a pretty cool water park. Like it's got like a lazy river here and a bunch of stuff. Do you see? Can you see this that I'm sharing here, Bill? So, this, Michael, I have like a belief about the ideal version of America. In the ideal version of America, there is one of these within driving distance of every human being. Like this is like this is joy, like in a, you know, one square, two square acres. You know, there's a couple water supplies, lazy river. I used to go to one of these when I was a kid. We had one. Unfortunately, it is closed down now uh, around here. But like, this was the best day yeah. of my year when we got to go to this water park as a kid. I think everyone should have this. <laughs> we used to have one of these um, in uh, in San Antonio, and they had to close down because it kept having shootings. <laughs> Whoa! It's like, pew pew. I was like, oh come on, guys! Like it was, it was on the wrong side of town. So at the water park, Splashdown. like where do you keep it? Like you're wearing a swimsuit? <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> people strapped at the yeah, water it's park. Bad news. <laughs> um, so I just looked up where this is. It's halfway between, uh, George Atlanta and it looks like Greenville, South Carolina. I think that's, yeah, that's where those two are. It's, well, it's, it's, it's about a third of the way. If you drive from Atlanta to Greenville to Charlotte, it's uh, about halfway between Atlanta and Greenville. So that's what we're looking at here. So somewhere in, in the okay. Chattahoochee mountains, I guess, is that what that is? Uh, sure. I'll <laughs> yeah, go, with, go it. with it. Not from Georgia, but <laughs> that sounds like uh mounds that would be in Georgia though. Chattahoochee's. <laughs> Perfect. Um, okay. So <laughs> this is a water park. They're asking $4.5 million. Cash flow is $310,000. So good news. It's a profitable business, which is a good sign. Um, they don't talk about revenue, EBITDA or any of that kind of stuff, but they do say there's $3.7 million in real estate here. So um, it is Helen, Georgia's largest riverfront development opportunity. It's an operating water park with the business included in sale. It is marketed exclusively by TransWestern, tourists by appointment only, and please contact Austin Hibbard uh, with TransWestern. So it is located in Helen, Georgia, approximately six acres along the Chattahoochee River, and it is zoned C2, Commercial District, City of Helen. An exhilarating opportunity for those who... So seeking to own the largest riverfront development in Helen, Georgia, which includes an already thriving operating business. This remarkable investment opportunity combines the allure of a growing tourist destination with the potential for expansion and development. 
With Helen's rich history, Bavarian charm, and over 2.2 million visitors a year, owning this prestigious development project opens the door to a world of endless possibilities. Seize the chance to be a part of Helen's remarkable growth and embark on a journey that promises excitement, success, and a legacy into the heart of this enchanting town. Enchanting town. Um, so just pause there. 2.2 million visitors is a lot. Like the Alamo in San Antonio. How many visitors do you think the Alamo in San Antonio gets a year? It's quiz time. Okay, I have been to the Alamo, uh, and it was busy when I was there. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's got to be less than 2.2. I bet it's, I bet it's about a million a year. Uh, 2.5. 2.5. And then San Antonio gets about oh, wow. 40 million okay. tours. Yeah, San Antonio is actually okay. one of the biggest tourist destinations in Texas and in the, in the U.S. So. Okay, so Helen, Georgia is about as popular as the Alamo, is what you're saying. Uh, yeah, probably more impressive to be honest with you. <laughs> everybody, everybody gets the Alamo and they're like, that's it. <laughs> there was a little bit, of, I did find it cool. I like, it was cool. But this was not very big. Uh, what's neat about it is because, because the politics in Texas are so kind of wonky that because of that, you know, we're basically in Texas, we're what California is to Democrats. We are that to Republicans. Like we're one party state <laughs> here, here straight up and down. And um, so the Republicans here have decided that the Alamo is not just a tourist destination. It is a representation of everything great about Texas, freedom, liberty, you know, fighting back, like all that kind of stuff. So it is, tra they are transitioning it and throwing a ton of money the state is to turn it into a straight up shrine to, to liberty and whatever that means. And in, in, in practice, I don't know, but it's straight up. They're throwing a lot of money to make it a really fancy. So that is a good thing about what's going on in San Antonio. It's going to be more impressive because they're putting a museum and all this cool stuff. So anyway, I would argue that Helen, Georgia in this water park is equally a shrine to liberty and America, <laughs> just like the Alamo. <laughs> there should be, there should be more of these. <laughs> I'll go with you. They, they, you uh, yeah, let me uh, just amen. say, you don't see these in Europe. Okay. This is America. We have water parks. You ever seen a water park in Europe? No, they don't have them because that's what we do here. We have fun, big water parks. <laughs> <laughs> that meme, meme where the, the European mind cannot comprehend this. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Sample exactly. best property that, uses. Exactly. Back to the listing. Keep existing water park business, restaurants without drive-ins, retail shops, shopping centers with on-site parking, commercial entertainment, recreation, hotels and motels, seasonal housing on the second and higher floors of commercial buildings, long-term housing, museum, galleries and theaters, distilleries, brew pubs and breweries. And then there's the whole thing for the city of Helen zoning code and things you can and can't do. Real estate is included in the asking price and the owner is looking to retire from this per portion of their businesses. It would not surprise me if this is that kind of profile of person we've run across in the past who is like the one guy who owns like the insurance agency, the water park, like the surveyor and the title company and happens to be a lawyer in the town of Helen and like has become the, the impresario of the whole thing. So and probably owns the town cafe too. <laughs> I will bet you a zillion dollars that this is represented by a commercial real estate broker and not a business broker. Uh, Transwestern. Transwestern. Yeah. Transwestern is a real estate broker. So they are a business brokerage, but this guy, Austin Hibbard, I guarantee you he's double licensed as a real estate agent. <laughs> I, I would bet so much money. I mean, this whole listing is about the development opportunity of the land and the details of C2 zoning. You know, this is, this is not a water park. This is a piece of property with a water park on it, at least the way it's positioned. That's the way they're doing it. Yeah, this, um, right? yeah, yeah, for sure. So I pulled up their, uh, well, they have exactly what you're talking about. They have a real estate kind of uh, deck that they have here to talk about Helen, Georgia, and it's in the Blue Ridge Mountains and it's a Bavarian whatever. And, um, oh, they have a survey of it as well. Yeah, this is definitely a real estate broker. Um, all right. So I already found him on LinkedIn, Austin Hibbard, subtitle, commercial real estate brokerage. <laughs> so, you know, th this is like your classic two time in like I sell real estate, I can sell a business. Right. Um, so, I mean, that's fine. Maybe the highest and best use of this is the real estate. Depends on your definition of highest and best use. I would like to see it remain a water park. Hell yeah. It's America. All right. Taking a quick pause here. I have something to tell you. This is Michael. I hate bookkeeping. <laughs> 
I hate bookkeeping. I hate doing HR. I hate doing all that kind of stuff. Uh, but for bookkeeping, I have found a solution. It is um, my friend Charlie's business called cloudbookkeeping.com. So that's cloudbookkeeping.com. Uh, they are your perfect partner if you want to get bookkeeping out of your hair and focus on making your company, cu your customers happier and more successful. So um, please give them a call. Call Charlie, cloudbookkeeping.com. Tell them we sent you. Uh, they're a great way. If you're a business buyer, if you're a business owner, you're tired of hassling uh, with getting your bookkeeping done. He's got a whole fleet of people that are well-trained and work for him. Uh, he's located here in San Antonio. So I can tell you because of that, he's awesome. And uh, they're a great partner for you to potentially call to help with all your bookkeeping needs so you can do the important stuff in your business uh, rather than worry about getting your books right. So uh, give Charlie a call, cloudbookkeeping.com. And now back to the episode. So it's interesting, well, they market it just like a piece of property, which to me makes it sound like the sound like the water park may not be doing so great. Yeah, so the first thing I would be doing here is teasing out the independent financials of the water park as distinct from the real estate. You know, you want to understand you're probably buying a piece of property, which you need to value on its own. Uh, and then you're probably buying a water park, which you also need to value on its own. Uh, because I bet they've got a couple entities here. I bet one of them is paying the other one rent. And actually, that would be the correct way to do it is to have multiple entities and, and to have a rent rental income stream going between them. But you would want to make sure you really understood that before you did this deal. Yeah, and it's interesting when we go back to the original listing, they value the real estate at 3.7 million, cash flow at 310,000, and the asking price is 4.5 million. Yeah, they've also priced this like a real estate deal. It's like, okay, well, like eight, eight cap? Do I hear eight cap, anyone? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> well, if you also like divide, you take the purchase price and it's 4.5 million but they say the real estate is 3.7 million. That implies they value the business here at 800 or $800,000 and on cash flow of 310. Yeah, it's two and a half X for the water park is what they're trying to do. But to me, you can't have it both ways. You can't try to sell the land and the water park and describe value to the water park and literally in the same breath say, you should knock down the water park. <laughs> right? Like you can't, you like you can't, you don't get both. You don't get to say, buy this and knock down the water park, but also I want you to pay eight hundred thousand dollars for the cash flow from the water park. Like that yeah. doesn't that just doesn't work. It's it's illogical. Looking at the pictures of these improvements in the water park, there is several million dollars if you wanted to build this fresh. They're actually, it appears to be they're they're you know, maybe they're including that in the real estate value, but like you look at the pools here and these slides and the little like Bavarian, like, I don't know, tube tunnel or whatever this is. And then there's interior stuff and machinery. You know, this is millions of dollars worth of water park improvements. Oh, yeah. I think it's awesome. And it seems it seems like I've never been to Helen, Georgia, but in reading their deck, it seems like it says surrounding attractions. The Helen Tubing Company, the annual Helen Oktoberfest Festival, the annual Helen Atlantic Hot Air Balloon Race, the annual Christ Kindle Market, the, you know, lake, wineries, like it seems like this is like a destination town, yeah. you know? So there's, there's tourism coming to this town, which if you're a real estate developer, I think is awesome. I think it's also awesome if you're a water park owner. Um, so I would want to understand also, why is this guy selling this property now? I mean, this is obviously the, the question you always ask when you buy a business, why am I the lucky guy that gets to move to Helen, Georgia and own this water park when the guy who currently owns it probably knows everything about Helen, Georgia, uh, owns this property and this water park. It's probably not the only property he owns in Helen, Georgia, and this is the one he's choosing to sell. Why? Um, so you've got to come into this and say, is this a bet where I have the most information or is the guy on the other side of this selling me the least attractive plot? in Helen. Maybe there's some reason this can't be developed, or maybe it will be very expensive. Maybe the water park, you know, chlorine of the water park for 20 years means it's a environmental hazmat thing and you can't build a restaurant or a grocery store on it. I don't know. I just, why is this guy selling this thing now? Uh, especially if he's got other properties in Helen and especially if Helen is on the up and up and exploding, why is he selling this? Why can't he just hold the real estate and let it appreciate like crazy? Million percent. Well, they do list here the reason for selling is the owner is looking to retire from this portion of their businesses. <laughs> so it's like, okay. Oh, red flags, red <laughs> flags. 
Um, Owner is looking to dump this crappy asset on you, buyer, while retaining the better assets. Yeah. Well, I think the other, to your point about, you can just tell from looking at this, what's going to work here is from the listing, the very first sentence when you double click on their PDF, an exhilarating opportunity awaits for those seeking to own the largest development opportunity in Helen, Georgia, which includes an already thriving operating business. You know, I think that at this price, I will bet my entire, I'll, I'll bet the deed of the house I'm sitting in right now that there's no way this deal underwrites just as a water park. And that's why they're, they're, they're coy about the numbers. And then this is somebody has to come in and turn it into Idlevice business, you know, village or something like that. Like this is a development opportunity where these brokers are pricing it where they see the best use of this property as not a water park and something else. Which, by the way, is totally fine as long as you know what you're coming into. You know, parcels are sold as development opportunities all day, every day. One's been sold since we started recording this podcast, I'm sure. Um, and it looks like, you know, this is on the river and it's, you know, it's kind of between the main road and the river. Like, absolutely build something on here. I just find this disingenuous to be sold as a business and asked to be to ascribe value to the water park, which, you know, the and then in the next breath, they say, seriously, knock down the water park, <laughs> right? Like it just doesn't make sense. Yeah. Well, look, I think if you're, if you're a real estate developer and you're, or you're the type of person that does placemaking out in random ass towns, and I mean that in the nicest way, cause you look at where this is like, like it is not near the highway. I don't know what it's near. Um, it is, it is not convenient and you know, it's a two hour drive outside of Atlanta. And then plus that, if you're going to come from Charlotte or Augusta, like, you know, I, I think it's the right buyer for a real estate developer, but it's one of those deals you see here on biz by sell. That's interesting, but it's just a waste of your time to dig into it. If you're doing anything but real estate development. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and Helen, by the way, it looks like a wonderful place. You know, it's Georgia's official outdoor destination. It's a mountain town. Like the whole downtown is done in this Bavarian style. Uh, like people go to Helen, like for the weekend, like to go away to the mountains and do stuff. So I think, you know, it would be one thing if this was like a random water park in the middle of rural Georgia that you just had to drive through. You know, an attraction like this makes sense. And real estate like this makes sense because it's kind of this, to your point, this place making thing. People are coming to Helen for vacation and there's restaurants and there's hotels and there's all these other things. Um, so if you want to build a, a commercial park here, heck yeah. But if you want to keep operating the water park, maybe also heck yeah, but don't pay four and a half million dollars for it. This feels very much like uh, Fredericksburg, Texas. I don't know. Are you familiar with Fredericksburg, Texas? Have you heard of it? No, no. It is uh, 90 minutes outside of San Antonio, Northwest. It is a former one of the, you know, the Germans, uh, the, when the Germans started to settle in the 1800s in Texas, they got here and all the good land that was fertile and stuff like that, east and southeast of Austin and San Antonio, it had already been like divided up and it was ranches and farms and all that kind of stuff. So what was left was a bunch of rocky hill country that wasn't good for much. So that's where all the Germans went. So they, st they settled places like New Braunfels, Fredericksburg, uh, Kerrville has a huge, they, these are all like kind of up, up and out, up and out into the hill country. And so Fredericksburg is one of the cities um, that basically it's not a city, it's a town, but basically it's turned itself into a bedroom, like weekend destination where you can go and do wineries and walk through main street and buy arts and crafts and antiques and like go experience that kind of like country style, like exurb stuff. And it, I think every city has one of those. And this is the one here in, you know, this is, this is one for Atlanta where people will drive two hours and go spend a long weekend and up in the Blue Ridge Mountains, just like they do in Fredericksburg and San Antonio. Which is the proof that there is kind of durable and continuing demand for this type of thing. Cute mountain town that is, you know, hour and a half outside of the place that you live where you go spend a weekend and do a water park. You know, you, this work, this model works, uh, which, and so I wouldn't, I wouldn't hate, you know, owning a business in this town. I would of course want to understand the tourism trends the demographic trends of the towns that are within the two hour drive radius that feed it. You know, you want to kind of understand because these towns do die all the time. Also, if the cities that are feeding them die um, and also they thrive like crazy if the city, cities that are feeding them thrive. 
Um, so you got to understand kind of what what is making Helen, Georgia work. And it's probably population and income growth in Atlanta and Greenville, South Carolina. And betting on those two, just from what I know about those places, is probably a pretty good bet. Yeah, Atlanta's, Atlanta's going to win. There's, Atlanta continues to win. Yeah, I mean, the, the whole Southeast, Greenville, South Carolina, if you have never been, if anybody listening has ever been, you should go to Greenville, South Carolina. I drove down there. I live in Charlotte. So it's like an hour and a half, two hour drive. Drove down to Greenville, South Carolina for the weekend with my wife. Stayed in a nice hotel downtown. They've got a river that runs through the downtown. There's a bridge over it with like this gorgeous park all along the river. All these awesome new restaurants and hotels. Green, and I had one of the best meals I've ever had uh, at a restaurant downtown Greenville. Greenville is popping off. Like, and if if and if you're at, like live around Greenville, you kind of know this, but it is one of the hotter real estate markets in the Southeast right now. It's awesome. It's awesome. All right. Well, okay. So you're going to buy this water park or what? Uh, well, I might buy this six and a half acre, acre parcel in partnership with a commercial real estate developer. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good. Or right, I I'm might buy the water park if the person wants to retain the land and give me a nice long 20 year lease. Right. Yeah. Then I'll pay a reasonable three times multiple for, for the water park, but probably not both. It definitely feels in the too hard bucket. All right. Well, I was excited about this one. We'll keep looking. Keep looking. I like it. I'm glad it exists. Man, this is, I have so many good memories of being a kid, going to places like this, just being an idiot and all the weird, and you get like weird injuries as a kid here. It's like, what you know, you're like, why is the bottom of your foot like rubbed raw from like running on <laughs> concrete pools, right? Like that kind of, that kind of weird thing or like, you know, sunbur sunburns on the back of your heel, like just weird, weird injuries were the things I remember about going to places like this. And I think that's a great part of growing up. I agree completely. I'm glad this exists. All right. We can wrap it up. Someone buy this and uh, go there to due diligence and take a picture. <laughs> yeah, we'll pour, you buy one of these, we'll pour one out for you. So, all right, well, we'll see everybody next week. Thanks uh, for being here.